The Lakota military leader, known as High Backbone, or simply Hump, was an elusive warrior, or at least, he became elusive, due to many conflicting accounts about who he was, how old he was, and because it appears that more than one man had adopted the names High Backbone and Hump. High Backbone was also said to have a legendary status, in that he was the mentor of Crazy Horse, the famous war leader for the sub-tribe of the Lakota people known as the Oglala. Other sources claim that High Backbone was closer in age to Crazy Horse, leading some to believe that he could not have been a mentor and was merely a close friend or an advisor. Others believe that High Backbone or Hump was actually a close friend of Crazy Horse's father, Worm, who had once gone by the moniker of Crazy Horse as well. In essence, there exists much doubt as to who High Backbone was and what his relationships were like with the other members of the tribe. High Backbone was said to have been heavily involved in the Fetterman fight that took place in December 1866, which saw the natives take on 81 soldiers of the United States Army, led by Captain William J. Fetterman. Tensions were high at this point between the natives and the settling Americans, particularly on the Bozeman Trail, which was a newly established route for emigrants to travel to the gold fields of Montana. Using the trail, however, was a bit of a grey area in terms of legality, given that the trail was part of the Seox or Sioux, Cheyenne and Arapaho hunting grounds, grounds which were promised by the United States government to the native people in the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851. There exist accounts of the militia from Colorado butchering over 200 of the Cheyenne natives in the Sand Creek Massacre of 1864, just a few years earlier, and it's understood that this would be the catalyst for natives attacking the settlers throughout the surrounding area, including the Bozeman Trail. In order to defend against these attacks, the United States government built several forts on the Bozeman Trail, most notably a fort that went by the name Fort Phil Kearney. The Oglala leaders Red Cloud and Crazy Horse conducted full-scale attacks on Fort Phil Kearney, harassing the soldiers and picking on civilians who had been brought in to gather wood from the trees in the surrounding forests. These sort of arrangements were not uncommon and would make for ideal targets for the native warriors who would descend upon the civilians, who though were usually armed, would not stick around to engage the tribes. The natives would then collect the resources left behind, including weapons, tools, the wood that had been gathered, and even livestock. Several strategies were used to do this, but one most infamous ploy was where leaders like Crazy Horse would dismount from their horses and pretend to be defenseless. He would lure the soldiers into chasing them, where he would lead them into an ambush of a much bigger native force. It was maneuvers like this that would give Red Cloud and Crazy Horse an idea. On December 21st, 1866, 2,000 natives would hide themselves in and amongst the forestry just north of Fort Phil Kearney. Like always, the natives would descend upon the civilians who were gathering wood, knowing they would not put up much of a resistance, and knowing they would likely flee, leaving behind their resources. Hearing word of this, Captain William J. Fetterman was sent to aid the civilians. It's understood that High Backbone, or Hump, was a large influence of this battle, and that he was either involved in the fighting directly, or took on the role of a decoy alongside Crazy Horse and eight other warriors. Their role was to ride up to the fort as if on the attack, and when they received fire, they would flee as if they were intimidated. Colonel Fetterman and his soldiers played right into the natives' hands and rode after them, and found themselves lured into a massive gathering of waiting natives. It's understood that over 40,000 arrows rained down upon Colonel Fetterman and his troopers, none of which survived the barrage. We understand that High Backbone was a Lakota military leader, and was also involved in what is known as the Wagon Box Fight that took place in 1867, a year after the Fetterman fight, again under the Oglala leader, Red Cloud. The skirmish saw the Oglala and the other tribes of the Lakota seek out the United States soldiers of Fort Phil Kearney once more. One of the tasks of the United States soldiers at Fort Phil Kearney remained as it had been during the year of the Fetterman fight, 
to protect the 100 civilians amongst them that were still gathering wood and timber from nearby pine forests. In the case of the wagon box fight though, Red Cloud, High Backbone and other native warriors were said to have been poorly armed, poorly organised and didn't really have much of a motive in mind when attacking the soldiers and the civilians. Furthermore, the civilians and soldiers had devised a strategic defensive that saw them using wagons to form a fortification. Captain James Powell of the United States Army and his some 50 troopers were sent to the pine forest to guard the civilians gathering wood from native attacks. It's understood that up until this point, he had been eerily quiet. On August 2nd, Captain Powell's forces were given a various set of escort and protection tasks. It was around this time when his forces were separated did Red Cloud, High Backbone, Crazy Horse and several others descend upon the wagon box. Much like during the Fetterman fight, the natives would send a small team in first to get the soldiers to chase them, where they would lead them into a much larger force to be decimated. But the natives would not see a successful attack here. While Red Cloud, High Backbone and Crazy Horse saw to the attacking of soldiers, many escaped and were able to summon reinforcements. Unbeknownst to the natives that a cavalry was on the way, they took their time in looting the resources left behind by the soldiers and the civilians, and took to terrorising those who had retreated behind the wagons. When the attacking natives encountered the resistance from those behind the wagons, they were not discouraged, but instead continued to launch attacks, even killing Captain Powell's second in command in the process. During this time though, Major Benjamin, who was stationed at Fort Kearney, who'd been notified of Red Cloud's forces attacking the wagon box, made his way to the site with a hundred soldiers. Using long-ranged artillery, Major Benjamin was able to force the natives into a retreat. The natives were said to have suffered losses between a mere two lives and a whopping 1500. Captain Powell estimated that 60 natives had been killed by his own men, but this has been discredited. The exact number of casualties and fatalities for the natives is not known, but it was this skirmish that exemplified the military juggernaut that was the United States Army, and made the natives realise that their weaponry of bows and arrows was seriously outmatched by the breech loaders that were wielded by the invaders. Some say that this event was the very last charge that Crazy Horse led against the settlers, for he knew then that they could no longer outsmart or outfight the United States. This would lead on to the Second Treaty of Fort Laramie in 1868. It established the lands that the natives would retain, and also established the United States would acquire authority to punish the natives who committed crimes, as opposed to them facing tribal courts. It also detailed that the United States government would recede their efforts on the Bozeman Trail, abandon the forts, and provide resources to the natives in the area, in the hopes that they would transition into farming and a more American way of life. In essence, it was this treaty that saw the end of Red Cloud's war. However, High Backbone, or Hump, appeared to have preserved his status as a war chief. It would be just two short years after the end of Red Cloud's war in 1870 did High Backbone ride into Shoshone territory, Shoshone being another native tribe who lived in what is now modern day Wyoming and Idaho. High Backbone's intention appeared to have been to raid the tribe and sack the villages, but unfortunately, it was here he met his demise. It's not known what his motives were, nor how he was actually slain, but records of his name do not appear after this point. The name High Backbone and Hump were used often within native tribes. As I mentioned earlier, it's entirely possible that there were more than one High Backbone and more than one Hump who may have lived in completely different generations, before and after the invasion of the United States. The deeds of these men however are not recorded, nor are their exact identities. These unfortunately are lost to history, or at least are mere whispers within the inner circles of the native community. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the man or men named High Backbone or Hump. Do you have any more information about this figure? If so, do share them with me below. This was the first Patreon supported video I've done here on the channel and it was a lot of fun to make. 
If this is something you'd like for yourself, then head on over to my Patreon and check out the tiers on patreon.com forward slash legends of history. Some of you may know about the great copyright apocalypse that hit me early on in the year, which has caused me to redo a lot of the videos, so any donations will go straight back into the channel so I can pay for the amazing artwork now seen throughout the videos. Even if it's just a dollar, I'd be massively appreciative of it. Special thanks to Shiloh Muskrat for your donation and for bringing an interesting topic for me to talk about today. In the meantime guys, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Until the next time guys.